Good evening, yes, friends. Welcome to daily editorial analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 1st of October 2024. Pre storming prelims test series batch 2 is starting on 5th October 2024. Interested aspirants can use it. In this video, we are going to discuss two important editorial articles one from Hindu newspaper and another from Indian Express newspaper. The first article is about the private participation in India's nuclear energy. This is a very important article because it discusses what are the impact of private sector in India's nuclear energy. The next article is about Lanina shadow. This article explains the impact of Lanina weather pattern on India's pollution levels. So these are the two important articles we are going to discuss in this video. Let us get into the discussion. Now look at this article. Indian government is planning to expand the nuclear energy sector by partnering with the private sector. So the news is that private sector is going to be involved in India's nuclear technology. So the private sector can assist in the research and development of Bharat small reactors. So in this discussion, we are going to see what are the impact of private sector in India's nuclear technology. Let us get into the discussion. Firstly, we are going to start with the basics. Nuclear energy comes from splitting the atoms in a nuclear reactor. So the energy produced during the splitting of atoms is used to heat the water and turns into steam. The steam will turn the turbines. So this is how nuclear energy is produced in a nuclear reactor. And currently, India is the third largest producer of electricity in the world. If you take nuclear energy, it is the fifth largest source of electricity in India. The major sources of electricity in India are coal, gas, hydroelectricity and wind power. So, after these four sources comes the nuclear energy. The Department of Atomic Energy, which is established in 1954, is responsible for the development of nuclear program in India. And India has over 23 nuclear reactors, which is present in seven major power plants across country. The government aims to boost the nuclear energy contribution from 3.2% to 5% by 2031. So currently, the energy contribution of nuclear energy is 3.2% and the government is planning to increase this contribution to 5%. The India's nuclear program focuses on developing thorium-based fuel. This is because there is a shortage of uranium. As India imports most of the uranium sources, there will be shortages of uranium in future. So, India is developing on thorium-based fuel for nuclear reactors. Regarding the nuclear power plants, Kudangulam nuclear power plant in Tamil Nadu is the largest nuclear power station in India at present. The Kakrapar atomic power station, which is in Gujarat, the Rajasthan atomic power station, Kalpakam atomic power station in Tamil Nadu, Narora Atomic Power Station in Uttar Pradesh and Tarapur Atomic Power Station in Tarapur in Maharashtra. These are the major power stations in India. And if you look at the current energy capacity of nuclear technology is 428 gigawatt. So this is just 3.2 percentage of India's electricity contribution. Now looking at the India's energy goals. India is targeting at net zero emissions by 2070. Regarding renewable energy targets, India is aiming for 50 percentage of electricity from renewable sources by 2030. There is also a goal of 500 gigawatt of non-fossil fuel energy by 2030. And Indian government is planning to produce 5 million tons of green hydrogen by 2030. It is aiming to cut out carbon dioxide emissions by 1 billion tons by 2030. So, these are the important renewable energy targets of Indian government. If you look at the legal framework for nuclear technology in India, it is Atomic Energy Amendment Act in 1987. So, it is a primary law which governs the development and operation of nuclear energy sector. The Atomic Energy Act grants the government a full control over nuclear energy. So, this Atomic Energy Act was managed by Department of Atomic Energy and Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited, that is NPCIL. So, the Atomic Energy Act is managed by both Department of Atomic Energy and NPCIL. As we have seen in the news article, historically the private sector involvement in nuclear technology has been limited to engineering, procurement and construction roles. So, private sectors till now are involved only in the construction and engineering works of the construction of nuclear power plants. They are not directly involved in the nuclear technology or production of electricity. So now private sector is going to be involved in these areas also. A 2022 report by Department of Atomic Energy and Niti Aayog says that there are ways to engage private sector in small modular reactors. Here we have to understand what are the small modular reactors. They are a class of small nuclear fission reactors which are designed to be built in a factory and they can be shifted from the operational sites for installation. So, this is a small nuclear reactors which can be used to power buildings or used in commercial operations. So, private sector participation can be used in production of these small modular reactors. So, this is the plan of Indian government. 
The Niti Aayog report and finance ministry said that they can extract 26 billion dollars in private investment, but the challenge is research and development involvement, which is restricted by Section 3 of Atomic Energy Act. Now, what does this Section 3 of Atomic Energy Act says? This section says that the government has exclusive authority over the nuclear energy activities in India. So, this act prohibits the private sector involvement in research and development of nuclear technology. So, this is an important challenge in involving the private sector in the nuclear technologies. The India's initiative to expand the nuclear energy sector through private partnership is key to achieve the renewable energy targets. By developing the Bharat small reactors and Bharat small modular reactors, the government supports the commitment to decarbonization. An Indian government is also aiming for 500 gigawatt of non-fossil fuel energy by 2030. So, this Bharat small modular reactors can help achieve this target. So, there is a need for private collaboration in nuclear technology in India. So, the collaborative approach position India to meet the rising energy demands. So, these are the important points discussed in the editorial article. Look at this. This is a case regarding the private participation in nuclear technology. This case challenged the Atomic Energy Act restriction on private involvement in nuclear power licensing. With this, let us conclude the discussion. This is a main question regarding this topic. With the growing energy needs, should India keep on extending its nuclear energy program? Discuss the facts and fears associated with the nuclear energy. So, this is a UPSC mains question 2018. This question is about extending the nuclear energy program. Can we include the private sector into nuclear energy program? And what are the facts and fears associated? It means what are the recent condition of India's nuclear program? And what are the challenges associated with the nuclear energy? So, this is what asked in this question. For this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article. Now, look at the second article. It is about Lanina. Now, what is a Lanina condition? It is a atmospheric condition where the central and eastern Pacific Ocean is cooler than normal temperature. So, the Pacific Ocean along the South American continent becomes cooler during La Nina condition. There is an another concept called El Nino. El Nino means warming of surface ocean in Pacific. So, El Nino means warming of surface ocean water and La Nina means cooling of surface ocean water. Now, what is the effect of El Nino and La Nina on India? During El Nino, there is a lesser rainfall in India. It causes drought in India. But during La Nina, there is an increased monsoon rains in India. So, La Nina brings more rainfall to India. So, this is a major difference between El Nino and La Nina. So, basically, La Nina means cooling of surface ocean water in Central Pacific Ocean. Now, let us discuss what are the important points given in this editorial article. So, we are going to discuss how La Nina affects the pollution in different ways. Firstly, during monsoon, that is during the rainy season, there is a reduction in pollution. See, when La Nina brings heavy rainfall to India, the rains help to clean the air by washing away the pollutants. So, the pollutants like dust and other particles which are suspended in the air are washed away by the rainfall. So, during La Nina time, there is a less pollution in India. So, La Nina generally improves the air quality during the monsoon. Now, what happens during the winter time? See, during winter, there is an increase in pollution. La Nina causes colder and stagnant air, especially in northern India. So, the lack of wind means the pollutants like smoke and dust which are emitted from cars and other vehicles stay closer to the ground. So, the colder air keeps the pollutants intact. So, thereby there is more pollution during the winter times in northern India. So, the cold and damp condition which is caused by La Nina can lead to fog which mixes the pollution and then creates smog. So, smoke plus fog creates smog. So, this smog is a major impact on cities like Delhi. So, during winter time, La Nina leads to increase in pollution in northern India. Now, what is the impact of La Nina on weather pattern? See, La Nina's arrival has been delayed and this leads to extending of retreating monsoon. So, this can lead to more pollution problems during the winter month in north India. So, this is what we have seen. The combination of La Nina and the late monsoon withdrawal and also due to the stubble burning can increase the pollution in north India. So, the poor air quality is predicted in November month and it could last up to January. So, the intensity of this pollution may depend on how quickly La Nina is strengthening. So, the stubble burning and the late withdrawal of monsoon and the intensity of La Nina, all these leads to increased pollution in North India. The editorial article also discusses that during previous winters, such as in 2022 and 2023, when Delhi experienced the best air quality in the decade, this is due to the strong monsoon, but there is uncertainty about whether this will be repeated in this winter also. So, we have to wait and see how this winter will be. Now, looking at the scientific research and air quality models. 
The scientists from National Institute of Advanced Sciences that is NIAS and software model suggested that there will be a delay in Lanina combined with the extended dry spell which could increase particulate matter 2.5 and PM10 pollution levels. The National Institute of Advanced Sciences has predicted that this winter could see severe pollution because of the increased stagnation of air. Now what are the mitigation and policy concerns? There is a need to focus on PM2.5. This is because it is more harmful than larger particles like PM10. The current policies seem to place an overemphasis on PM10 only, but we have to be more careful about PM2.5. In addition to these challenges, there is also a speculation that when exactly Lanina will set in. So, scientists have predicted that Lanina will start in December month and there is a 55 percentage of chance that it will happen in December month. This is according to the reports of World Meteorological Organization. If it occurs later, that is after December, then the pollution would persist for a very long time. So then it will be a major problem for North India. Now let us see some way forward points. As I have said earlier, the policy makers need to refocus the efforts to mitigate the PM2.5, that is particulate matter 2.5, because this PM2.5 is more harmful than PM10. So, this involve revising the current policies to prioritize the emission control at the source itself. So, shifting the focus to PM2.5 is a one major important step. Then developing multi-sector strategies that is controlling the emissions from industry, transportation and agriculture is an another important step. There should be improved data collection. So, expanding the use of advanced air quality models. For example, we have SAFAR model and this should provide the real-time data across regions and should be expanded to more number of towns and cities for better forecasting and preventive actions. There should also be public awareness campaigns. So, educating citizens on pollution risk and promoting the changes in lifestyle and practices, this can reduce the city's pollution load. For example, we can encourage the cleaner alternatives to stubble burning. There are already more in action and we have to enhance them. International partnership is also a major step forward. Working with the global bodies like World Meteorological Organization, to develop more accurate and climate specific model is very important for mitigating the pollution in North India. So, sharing the best practices from other regions and successfully managing the pollution which is linked to the weather pattern is important at present. Because we have seen in the article, the presence of Lanina condition will increase the pollution level in North India. So, managing the pollution which are linked to the weather patterns is crucial. There should also be regional collaboration, strengthening the cooperation between the states to reduce the pollution sources because the stubble burning or the crop burning is happening in Punjab and it is affecting the pollution in Delhi and surrounding areas. So, the industries which causes pollution in Uttar Pradesh is also affecting the cities in Haryana. So, there should be regional collaboration between the states to reduce the pollution in overall North Indian region. So, concentrating on the weather related pollution level and also reducing the pollution at sources are important step forward. Regional collaboration and global collaboration are also important steps. So, this is about the way forward points. Now, we have come to the end of the discussion. Here we have seen about the Lanina phenomena and how it affects the pollution levels in North India. See, Lanina is a part of ENSO climate pattern. Here, ENSO means El Nino Southern Oscillation Climate Pattern. So, this alternates between El Nino which is a warming phase and La Nina is a cooling phase. So, there will be alternating El Nino and La Nina phases in Pacific Ocean. So, this year they expect that La Nina will happen in December month. So, La Nina may typically last from 9 to 12 months or even it takes up to 2 years. So, La Nina generally strengthen the Indian monsoon and it can lead to above average rainfall in many parts of India. So, it can benefit agriculture and it may also lead to increase in the risk of flooding. But the major drawback for North India is that it can intensify the pollution levels in those areas. So, on one hand, it brings above average rainfalls, that is more rainfall to these regions and it can also impact the pollution levels in these regions. So, this is about the effect of Lanina on Indian weather condition. Now, this is a mains practice question, comment on Lanina and El Nina effect on Indian monsoon. So, basically, Lanina improves the Indian monsoon, that is, it intensifies the Indian monsoon and brings more rainfall. El Nina reduces the Indian monsoon and rainfall. So, El Nino leads to lesser rainfall for India and La Nina leads to more rainfall for India. So, this is a general concept about La Nina and El Nina. So, with this, let us conclude the discussion. With this, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to Shankarayas Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.